Hello, my name is Joan Thompson and I'm sharing with you from my home office in Kitchener, Ontario, Canada. Throughout the history of what is now Community of Christ, there have been many stories of people reaching out to others to show love and compassion. Today, I want to highlight a story about Emma Bitterman. In late 1847, the widowed Emma Hale Smith, age 43, married Louis Bitterman, a 41-year-old widower with two young daughters. Together, they ran the Nauvoo Mansion House as a boarding house and raised their combined seven children. Lewis became Pa Bitterman to Emma's children, and by all accounts, it was a loving family. After more than 16 years of marriage together, Lewis was named as the father of an infant son born to Nancy Abercrombie, a much younger local widow with two other small children who was struggling to make ends meet as a single mother, farmer, and seamstress. Nancy was 34 at the time, while Emma was 60. In writing about this time, historian Mark Shearer has said, no documents exist that express the torment Emma must have felt. The pain of discovery must have been deep. Social norms empowered her to remove Bitterman from the mansion house and to bring her marriage to an abrupt end, end of quote. It was a time when the moral and ethical context emphasized and encouraged divorce in cases of adultery. But in this decision, as in several subsequent ones that led from it, Emma chose the path of compassion and forgiveness. Quoting from Shearer again, her decision was to rise above cultural expectations and work for reconciliation and peace. She hoped time would bring spiritual and emotional healing. Emma showed that true healing could come only with a demonstration of compassion greater than the offense against her. I think that last line is so important, I want to repeat it. True healing could come only with a demonstration of compassion greater than the offense. Emma chose what today we might describe as the path of the disciple. She forgave Bitterman, she found within herself compassion for both Bitterman and for the young seamstress, and they found a way to continue their marriage. However, even more compassion would be asked of her. Nancy Abercrombie simply couldn't earn enough to provide for her children. In 1868, Nancy asked the then 64-year-old Emma still grieving the recent death of her 25-year-old son, Frederick Granger, to take the child, Charlie, into her home and raise him. Not only was she being asked to raise the child of her husband and his lover, but to do so as a senior citizen who had already birthed or adopted 13 children, raising seven of them to adulthood. Not many of us would be willing to start again with child rearing at that age. Shira says, the request was an awkward one since it would be a constant reminder in Navu social circles of Lewis's indiscretion and Emma's humiliation. Nancy knew that this would test the limits of Emma's compassion, yet Emma agreed and brought the four-year-old child into her loving home." End quote. Emma's compassion, however hard one it might have been, continued to overflow in acts of further generosity. Four-year-old Charlie also had an older half-brother and sister. Concerned about the poverty of Nancy Abercrombie and these two other children, 
Emma brought all of them to live with her family at the mansion house, hiring Nancy to help with the work of the boarding house. For the last 11 years of Emma's life, the two families lived and worked as one. It's difficult to know what future Nancy Abercrombie and her three children would have had without Emma's compassion and generosity. We can be certain, though, that their lives were substantially improved, both financially and emotionally, through Emma's care and support. Shortly before her death, Emma's last request to both Bitterman and to Nancy was that they marry each other after she was gone for the sake of the 15-year-old Charlie. I've chosen this story because, while well, for many historians it's merely a footnote about the life of the founding prophet's widow, I think it has something to teach us today about the nature of Christian discipleship. Sometimes we're called to demonstrate Christ-like love and acceptance to strangers and sometimes to those within our circle of family and friends. There are times, however, when we are asked to wrestle through deep personal pain or feelings of betrayal that can be powerful forces for the severing of relationships or ignoring the needs of others. I find myself tying together two phrases. One is from the statements I quoted from Scherer, that true healing can come only with a demonstration of compassion greater than the offense. The second is the last sentence in section 163.4a, for in their welfare resides your welfare. This is a story about a remarkable woman who wrestled with pain and betrayal yet by choosing the path of the disciple, was able to spend the remainder of her life at peace with herself and her now much larger family. It's my hope that this story can have a lasting impact on the future choices I make. Thank you for listening.